Welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss about the philosophy behind uh, evolution of education policy. Uh, we have with us Dr. L. Jahavar Nason, a person who had traveled with people, especially with the working class, and he was able to understand the social issues. And he is coming out with, with his own uh, philosophy that he has derived from the society and he is linking that with the draft national education policy 2019. Uh, we will uh, sh speak to him, let him share his views. It's uh, really nice having you here. Thank uh, you. After you have come out with your fresh book in search of education, um, we are all traveling together uh, in searching what education is. Yeah. Many people think literacy is education and they see if they are not literate, we say they are not educated. Now you have come out with the title In Search of Education. What really uh, made you write this or uh, what motivated you? Uh, what was the issues uh, that uh, provoked you uh, in bringing out uh, uh, this book? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, the problem is, it's a long pending quest inside me i've been traveling across the world and uh, living in different academic settings and uh, involved with different uh, societal discourses which deals with education and uh, where i found that what is education when it comes to the indian uh, societal settings and indian conditions has been the question driving me for a long time so uh, this had uh, tempted me uh, to attempt into uh, finding uh, what education is about. And uh, I always had uh, a contention that education, uh, without taking into consideration the kind of society and conditions that the society is facing, then it cannot serve the people, educate the, the educational service. So that means that there was a, a confrontation and conflict that I always observed um, between the way in which education has been addressed in India and the kind of society that is uh, prevalent uh, for the past uh, several uh, thousand years and especially in recent times it is heading towards a more uh, uh, segregated kind of society. More and more segregation and divisions and uh, disparities are uh, going ahead, I found that education is not doing its enough uh, job. So then I thought that there must be uh, a, a solution uh, with respect to the Indian condition and the society that we have in India that education must address. So eventually when I was uh, looking and uh, purviewing and uh, you know investigating these matters within myself for a long number of years, suddenly this policy came up. So the, the, draft the, the draft policy, the draft national education policy came up and that triggered me uh, that this is the time that I must step into it and then tell this nation that uh, what education is about and also the policy makers, lawmakers and the citizens of this country as to what education is about and how education has to be uh, handled in the kind of the society, the social structure that we have, the social conditions, economic conditions that we have in India. So that is the main reason. Oh, you are uh, very right. I remember last year a 13-year-old girl, Raja Lakshmi, um, she was beheaded inside her house and her head was carried on the streets by the perpetrator. Uh, entire Tamil Nadu was silent. Our own school her own teachers and her own classmates, they not even mourned her death, um, not condemning it. So that is the uh, social discrimination that we have. And the reason for behaving her head is that she questioned her neighbor and the neighbor asked her, you born in this community? The girl belonged to a Dalit community and the question before uh, uh, um, slitting her head the question that was put by that person was you born in this community you dare to question me 
So if somebody were born in some other community, they can question. But the person who is born in this community cannot uh, question. That is what uh, we were able to understand. So that is the society. What the 13 year old old girl, uh, she was studying 8th standard Tamil medium uh, in a government school. And what she did is that what was in the text, the text said that you have a POKSO act, which says that somebody comes and touches you, you don't feel that, you can react. Yeah. She reacted, she did what the textbook told her to do. And that is the ground reality. Uh, do you feel the draft national education policy is trying to democratize the society? It's trying to help the people understand what education is about or uh, what actually the draft policy is trying to do. Yeah, I think that you answered yourself. Actually, I have to just build on the question. The question itself that you asked me has uh, answered itself. That the girl who was uh, beheaded uh, has been prevented uh, from questioning the facts or issues that confront her. So that means what? So that means this kind of the education, you know, I, I, I see education is not to be confined within four walls. Education is naturally as a social function is there in the society. And the society has to have uh, an informal uh, quest and questions and challenges uh, to be answering, to be answered itself. So that means the society directly or indirectly is involved in, uh, in searching solutions. In, in searching truths uh, kind of through a kind of a social learning that is what a natural education social as a social function is embedded there in the society so that means both the formal education and the kind of a, uh, an informal uh, education that the society imbibes itself has been facing in this country uh, that do what I say so that is a state of mind created by the people in this country and they are going to tell both the students as well as the society that you please stop and do what I say. So this is the state of mind that you should assume and you should not question. So that means that criticality in the thought process is uh, prevented or blocked. So that means that so the draft policy in its entire 484 pages, it never ever talk about the society structure, the kind of a critical uh, self-reflective uh, uh, attitude that a learner has to imbibe. So it is not even saying the how education could be used to solve the social problems that this country is facing. I mean the social problem is the caste in, in equal, unequal, undemocratic society that we have, which is the a menace that prevented this country to prosper in many ways. So. If, a t if, if anyone involves in drafting a policy or uh, giving some solutions to education in this country, it, has to, it, 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 it cannot go without considering the societal structure that we have and without democratizing the society we cannot go. But the society, the, the national education policy, draft policy doesn't even have a one word in its entire document. I feel you are very correct. It's not only talking about that. They don't recognize uh, that such an issue is there. Yeah. But what they talk in the draft policy is that today's market demands skilled labor. Mm. And this current education system does not produce skilled uh, person for the market. Uh, their worry is that the people come out of school, come out of college, come out of university. They just hold a degree. They, they do not have any uh, skills. Uh, and no, now what we are going to do is that we are going to introduce occasional uh, training. They, they say we, no hard separation between occasional and academic stream. Uh, how do you look at this? Just killing people uh, will uh, uh, help the individual as well as the society or it is going to serve only the uh, market. At the outset, I would like to say that this, uh, this draft education policy uh, is trying to impose the, the, the aspirations of the society, the unequal society, hierarchically degraded unequal society and the new liberal social order. The new liberal social order is the one that uh, is based on the consumer economy and market driven economy. So the market is they playing a vital critical role nowadays is brought into the society's uh, for uh, central point 
and it is trying to inculcate its attitude its culture its uh, you know uh, aggressive uh, attitudes that it wants to and that is the way that it expects education to uh, to follow the suit so that means education is not is, 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 is has to be like uh, uh, focusing more on the technicalities satisfying the demands of the market so that means they expect only the students to be extended machines to just act like an extended machine uh, and and the students or learners should not think beyond that and and acquire the skills needed by the corporate bodies business sectors and uh, the market so that means that it is like a tuition center, it is like a coaching center. It is not the place where students are allowed to think and act. It is not the place where the students are allowed to reflect upon the conditions, the challenges and the questions that they face in their career or in their life or the society's life. So that means that what this country, this education policy uh, is, is, is asking us to do is to just simply focus on the skills required by the corporate bodies like Ambani's and things and just to stop, period, that's it. You don't go beyond that. The other hand, the social structure, the, the, the mindset of the requirements of the super speciality, specially cultivated class of the society which is uh, at the helm of the affairs of the society at the top. So that means that it is uh, trying to inculcate mainly the, uh, the, the, the desirable uh, goals and aspirations of uh, these two major menaces facing this country. Uh, so that is the reason because education is a kind of uh, platform where we can uh, use social learning to inculcate or intoxicate or indoctrinate the uh, ideologies, the ideals of the social liberal mechanisms and ideals of the caste uh, system mechanisms. So th the way they have uh, portrayed the Indian centric education, the Indian pride, are fostering mainly the ideals of the uh, uh, the specially cultivated class on one hand on the other hand it is fostering the neoliberal social order uh, thirst so that means that these are all the things that they want to inculcate uh, through a social learning into the classrooms and uh, make the people or students the future uh, adults uh, <coughs> into uh, their kind of a citizens so the citizenry that this education is going to create is not going to be uh, the kind of a society or kind of a you know people or citizens that this country deserve for but only to serve the needs of the uh, those at the helm of the affairs so that is the reason i i outright I, it should it should reject because it doesn't have any relevance to the, the, the society, uh, are the kind of uh, problems and conditions, the social conditions, economic conditions this country faces.